In this session, we'll talk about uh, TFL status. So TFL is transport for London uh, status. Um, so we need uh, th this particular demo is a team spot, uh, which uses OpenAI function calling and the TFL API in order to get the status uh, of the transport in, uh, in London. Now, uh, this particular sample uses the API provided by transport for London, but that can be changed to any other city based on the based on the transport department in that particular city. Right, um, quickly about myself. My name is Anoop. I am an MVP in the Office 365 developer category. Uh, and those are the links to my profile and blog and Twitter and GitHub. You can follow me on those platforms if needed. Uh, now, this particular sample is based on uh, an OpenAI uh, port sample that was created by Lee Ford. Uh, I'll be uh, you know, showing the link to that sample as well towards the end of the presentation. So what I've done is I've taken that sample as the base and then uh, extended it uh, by adding something called as function calling, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Right, let's take a look at the demo first, uh, and then we will understand the different concepts. So what I have here is a Teams bot, uh, and uh, what we can do is we can ask uh, this Teams bot some questions. Now, ignore all the questions that I've asked uh, before. Uh, I'll just ask a new one. So in London, we've got these uh, different underground uh, train lines. They have got different names like Northern Line, Central Line, Circle Line, etc. So I'm just asking a question uh, about the status of one of the lines, which is the Northern Line. Uh, now what happens is this request uh, is sent um, uh, to OpenAI, uh, and then along with that, uh, the TFL API also comes into picture, and then using the combination of both, uh, a response is returned uh, based on the status. Uh, of the line. So in this case, it says that the, the northern line, uh, which is represented by that color, uh, is in good service. Uh, and then here, uh, over here, a funny message is added as well. Now, if I ask another question, uh, saying, can I take the circle line uh, to go to the office? Uh, again, the same thing happens. This question is sent to OpenAI, and then using the combination of uh, uh, the API provided by Transport for London, uh, the response is is returned back. Now, uh, just to confirm that uh, uh, it is correct, so if I just open the website of Transport for London, uh, you can see that uh, you know, in fact, uh, both Northern and Circle are are on good service. Now, earlier, uh, there were some delays on, on a line called as central line. Uh, so whenever that's the case, uh, you know, uh, the response is returned uh, in a similar manner. Right, so that's the demo. Uh, now, if I go back to the presentation, uh, now the scope of this application, uh, it is uh, applicable to both OpenAI and Azure OpenAI. Uh, in this particular sample, we are using OpenAI, but it can be easily switched to Azure OpenAI as well. And uh, the the models, the OpenAI models that are being used uh, are GPT-3.5 Turbo or GPT-4. So let's quickly understand what function polling is first, uh, which is the main feature of this application, and then understand how we are using it. Uh, so function calling, uh, the way we can think of that is it, it extends the OpenAI models, uh, in particular 3.5 Turbo and GPT-4. Uh, the way it does that is it understands the user intent based on the question, uh, and then tells uh, what function to call. Uh, so, for example, uh, if we ask OpenAI uh, about the current weather, uh, OpenAI comes back with the response saying, I do not have access to the weather API or something like that because uh, it has been trained uh, up until September 2021, so it can't give us the current uh, weather information. But if we have some functions in our code which can give us the current weather or the weather forecast, then we can pass the names of the functions and what they do, uh, a nice description of those functions to OpenAI along with our question. Then OpenAI uh, looks at the question, understands the intent of from that question, and then tells us which function to call. So for example, if you ask what the current weather is, OpenAI tells us we need to call the function called get current weather. 
And then once we, we, we call that function get current weather in our code, when we get the current weather, pass the response back to OpenAI. OpenAI then converts that into natural language and uh, gives back the response. So that's what function calling is. Uh, so in this particular sample, uh, now imagine that uh, uh, th this sample that I just showed you earlier did not have function calling. Now, if I ask uh, a question to that saying, is the district line running? So district line is another line in uh, in London. Um, then uh, OpenAI comes back saying uh, it uh, does not have access to real-time traffic information. Uh, now, with the introduction of function calling, what will happen is uh, we'll send that question, is the district line running? along with a couple of functions that we've got in our code. Uh, we'll just send the definition of these functions, uh, basically the name of the function, the arguments that it expects, uh, and the description of, of the of the function. So in this case, I've got two functions, uh, get line status and then display line status. So uh, along, with, along with this question, um, we send this to OpenAI. OpenAI then understands the intent of the question and tells us that uh, we need to call the get line status function in our code, and uh, that function needs to be called with an argument of line ID with, with the value as district. And what we do in our code is we call the get line status function, which in turn calls the the transport for London API, and then whatever response is returned from transport for London API, uh, it's a JSON. We send that JSON back to OpenAI. Uh, so in this case, that JSON has uh, the name of the line and the status of the line. Then OpenAI interprets this JSON data and says that the district line uh, is running fine. Uh, and then we take that response and then show that in our application. Uh, solution overview. Uh, so if we, if you take a look at this diagram from right to left, uh, so we've got the Teams client. Uh, from there, uh, we send our question to the Azure bot. The Azure bot then uh, sends the request to an Azure function. Uh, so that's where the the, uh, the the code runs. And then the Azure function sends that request to OpenAI. Uh, uh, OpenAI response, and then ultimately the response is sent back uh, to the user in, in Teams. Now we are using Azure functions as the backend uh, over here for the bot, but uh, even a web app can be used as well. Right. Uh, a quick code overview. So all this uh, all this sample is present in the Teams samples repository. Uh, the name of the sample is bot OpenAI TFL status. Uh, what we have to do is uh, we have to create a local settings file and then add the main things uh, like the OpenAI key and the model, and then the the app IDs and the uh, passwords that are needed for the bot. Uh, once uh, setting up the app. And uh, OpenAI key is all explained in the README. Uh, once that is done, uh, we've got this main file, index.ts, wherein we go ahead and create uh, the Teams bot. Uh, I'm going through this code a bit quickly, uh, kind of considering the time. Uh, uh, so, what we do is we go ahead and create these, uh, something called as OpenAI messages, because these are the messages which we need to send to OpenAI. Uh, so firstly, we create a system message saying uh, what the how, how OpenAI should behave. In this case, a TFL uh, customer service agent, and then we get the user message. In this case, what's the status of district line? Uh, we take those messages and then call OpenAI, uh, and then in the helper file OpenAI.ts, uh, what we have is a method called OpenAI which uses OpenAI library to call the OpenAI method. And over here, uh, we pass in uh, the messages that we created earlier and something called as uh, functions. So these are the uh, the functions which we need to pass to OpenAI. In this case, a couple of functions, get line status and display line status. Uh, they've got a nice description as well. Um, so OpenAI, uh, what it does is it takes a look at the user question, understands the intent, and then uh, interprets which function to call. This is just the definition of the function itself. Uh, you know, it has got a description and uh, some properties. In this case, only one property, line ID, uh, which is uh, which has some fixed uh, values that OpenAI can uh, return. 
Um, and then what we do is uh, we send all that to OpenAI, get the response. Uh, in the response, uh, OpenAI says we need to uh, call a function. Name of the function is that. And then uh, those are the arguments uh, that need to be passed to the function. So we just parse that JSON uh, and then get the name of the function, get the arguments, and then go ahead and call the function. In this case, we go ahead and call the TFL API uh, by passing in the line ID, and then we want to get the status of that line. Uh, once we get back the status, uh, what we do is we take that JSON and then pass that JSON back to OpenAI. OpenAI interprets that JSON and then comes back saying, yeah, you need to stop the um, execution now, and then you need to display that particular message to the user. Uh, so in summary, function calling is available in OpenAI and Azure OpenAI. It helps us provide structure uh, output. This particular sample uses OpenAI, uh, but I am planning to uh, submit a pull request to use Azure OpenAI uh, very soon. And these were some of the resources that were used as part of this demo. And thank you. Mm -hmm.